So this is closing ceremonies. If you are called up on stage for some reason, like you won a contest or something, you're going to enter from this side of the stage, you're going to exit this side of the stage, you're going to walk all the way around and sit back down. Is everybody clear with that situation? Very simple traffic pattern. Entrance, exit, victory lap, sit down. Thank you. And if you ever do that again, I'll smack you. Hi, everybody. My name's Waz, and my partner in crime over here is I Don't Drive Cars, and we are the guys, organizers, and creators of the TD Francis XR Film Contest. This is our second year. This year we had eight teams register, and four teams were able to submit entries. And when I say submit entries, that means they had to write, create, film, edit, produce, a film from 6 a.m. as early as 6 a.m. on Thursday, and they had to turn it in by 5 p.m. on Saturday. So we have five, correction, four great entries, and my partner, I Don't Drive Cars, is going to start showing them now. Thank you. Unheard messages. Hey man, hope you had a good vacation. All right, so I got another issue. That uh, security system you set up for me isn't working, so uh, can you call me back when you get a chance? All right, thanks, man. Hey man, uh, it's Robert. How was Vegas? And more importantly, uh, how was DEF CON? Uh, good, I hope, because uh, the office has been a mess without you, and uh, seriously, we can't wait for you to get back. Uh, see you on Tuesday, man. I heard you just got back. You want to meet up? I really miss you. Call me back. Hey man, I haven't heard from you since Vegas. What's going on? Look, I'm having a party this weekend. My security system's still down. I need you over here as soon as possible, man. Call me back. It's fair for me to wonder if you are an honest operator and operating in good faith with me when you've not turned up for work in three weeks. I don't know what you think you're doing, but you can forget working here anymore. Okay, it's been almost a month. I don't know what's going on with you, but I'm not putting up with your shit anymore. I'm, I'm done. I'm fucking done. I hope she's worth it.
Thing. The hideout, the suicide, the whole thing was one big hoax. That son of a bitch has been on the run for over 70 years now. But you think that mustache would be hard to miss? That's the thing. The CIA knew there was an enclave of ex-Nazis just south of Sao Paulo for years. What they hadn't expected was that the whole thing was a diversion, a ruse to distract them while the big man himself set up the shop in the strip. Only he found out about the whole thing a few days ago after I spotted him at DEF CON. What's he doing at DEF CON? My sources tell me he plans to release a massive zero day during one of the presentations tomorrow. From what I've heard, it makes back orifice look like child's play. Wow, that sounds really dangerous. What are you going to do about it? Well, shit. I gotta take this. Hello? Is this Dust Red Hat? The private detective? Yeah. Who the hell are you? This moment for a long time. You're not going to be Are you okay? Fucking shot in the sternum. Of course I'm okay. But in all seriousness, my life flashing before my eyes for a brief moment made me think. And I think I know how I can stop him. How can we stop Hitler? Chances are he'll be signing up for the beard and mustache competition tomorrow. If we can get to him then before he starts his talk, we won't have a chance. Hmm, that sounds like a plan. I'll go there with you. And it's settled. We'll leave in the morning. But first, we need to make it rain. Well, the contest isn't open yet, but I think he's going to show up to it early. He's trying to bribe the judges to get past. Wait, is that him over there? the network. I've been running all around this place for 20 minutes. I've been pawned twice and I still can't get a good connection. My exploit is ruined. The Fourth Reich will be over before it begins. Aha! I've got him now. Using an RX modulator, I can backdoor my way to the GSM system on his phone and initiate a sequel injection that just might end his miserable life once and for all. A text? What the fuck? This is a burner phone. Nobody has my number here. And that's why you don't try to take over the world at DEF CON. Vegas. The suckers at the blackjack tables are just visiting, passing through town on their way back to their real lives. 
for us poor saps with permanent addresses, these are our real lives. We're passing through to somewhere else. I moved to Vegas to start a new life, to create a new identity and get on my feet before heading somewhere better, somewhere permanent. 23 years and I'm still not sure where that place is. I decided to head into the office. At least that's how I thought of Joe's bar. Sort of a combination of office, gin joint, and waiting room. Waiting. Some Vegas detective was standing outside the alley that ran behind the bar like he was waiting for CSI. The conversation was short, but I caught a glimpse of a body. Joe's has always been like a second home to me. Someone gets bumped off in my backyard and I take it personally. I decided to duck through. The corpse had been another regular for 23 years, just like me. That made him my brother. 23 years. That took me back. Back to the last thing I said to my old man just before I had to fake my own death to get out of the agency. Projects like Bull Run hadn't scared me. It's what they were doing with that information that made my knees weak. I'm sorry you feel that way. It's just another way of saying whatever. A quick peek at his driver's license for a home address was a good start. I grabbed some painkillers and headed out. See, I've got this little man. He lives in my chest. If something ain't right, he lets me nip my little man and started to squeeze. It looked like the corpse had developed an interest in Viktor Ruzikov. No wonder he was dead. Victor's work could make projects like Bull Run possible. One day he decided that he'd outgrown America's intelligence agencies. I knew he had a place here in Vegas, but I didn't have any idea what he was up to these days. Nobody did. Victor played the long game. If something bad happened on the internet, odds are he was behind it. He didn't do his own dirty work. But if you were the type to hold a grudge and Victor could profit from it, chances are you'd acquire some new tools. And by the time you realize who you could damage with them, you'd be convinced it had been your own night. The corpse had been a writer. Hard-boiled detective stories. Maybe 60 years ago, that might have earned him some scratch. He'd come to Vegas after a failed marriage and somehow ended up in a bar with a small group of hackers and decided to go modern. From his notes, it sounded like he'd managed to worm his way into their crowd. I doubt he ever really earned their confidence. I'd get enough liquor into anyone and they start to talk. The corpse had been taking notes. No doubt he wanted to write the next cuckoo's egg, but after 23 years of notes, something had started to come together. DEFCON 7, Blackjack tells a story about a guy who... DEFCON 11, early bird and wizard speculate on just how somebody could have... DEFCON 13, amidst the alcohol haze, Judas mentions... These guys were smart, but they probably never realized they were talking about the same guy, Victor. But 23 years of careful notes had started to look like a different bird's egg. It was right there in the corpse's book. He had tried to make that goose golden by blackmailing Victor. On the laptop, that story ended with Victor behind bars. Real life's probably still back behind Joe's bar, and in this heat, two to one says he's starting to smell. It seemed like an open and shut case. Only my little man wasn't buying it. I popped a couple more pills while I tried to work out what I was missing. 23 years of eavesdropping on hacker conventions. The novel, Viktor Ruskov, DEFCON, lockpicking, drinking, contests, 23 years at the same bar. And then it hit.
my first time in Vegas. The lights were bright. The city was great. It was all I expected. Hey guys, thanks a lot. We're going to be super quick here. Uh, the winner of this year's Film Fest contest is the 23rd Badge, the film you just saw by Lake State Studios. We'd like to thank the Seattle Film Institute for their generous prize of a $5,000 scholarship. And ships? Scholarships. <laughs> scholarships. Um, it's huge. It's huge. Uh, Video Maker Magazine for giving everyone who participated a subscription. We'd like to thank uh, DT, DEF CON, and we hope to see you guys next year and make a movie with us. Oh, and the videos will all be online. Here we go. Let's see. Ah, okay. See, our problem is we don't use any wireless microphones for obvious reasons. <laughs> All right, let's get this hooked up.
We good? We have no confidence monitors up here. All right, thank you. This is our official closing ceremonies. If you hadn't guessed, um, I am the Dark Tangent, and we are here for a journey for the next about an hour to tell you what happened, what you missed, who the winners are of all the contests and villages, make some special announcements of what to expect for next year. Yeah, so um, that's me. And to my right, with the great FOMO, is uh, Russ Rogers. Awesome. Yes, yeah, Russ really made things happen this year. Um, as you know, the first year in a new hotel is always exciting. So I want to thank everybody for putting up with the chaos of that first day. And we really tried to make some changes. Next year, obviously, we'll make some more changes. And, uh, you know, <laughs> what is this? We're huge in Norway. What's that all about? That was. Uh, that was voted the best thing left and lost and found. Yeah. <laughs> Every year we end up with a big. Pu it's be found. It's yours. Oh, now it's found. And who does it belong to? Renderman. Yeah. <laughs> I think you're just trolling us. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through uh, and we're going to give you a little report from what happened at the networking team, some of the other teams, and then some of the contests, the villages. We're going to make some pretty cool announcements. Um, but I am going to tell you ahead of time, yes, we're back at this hotel next year. We're not masochists. We're not changing hotels next year. Yeah. So on DEF CON forums, um, we're looking for your feedback for what worked and what didn't. Um, the stuff that was really painful, obviously we figured that out. <laughs> I remember I was speaking at the opening session and I came out, first talk, first day, opened up the doors and it was just, uh, just packed with people. And I'm like, He's mad at me. He's mad at me. She's mad at me. <laughs> like I can tell this is not working. And then by lunchtime we got a bunch of it sorted out. And so yeah, that stuff's obvious. But all the non-obvious stuff really let us know. Like we really want to try to improve it. Also, by show of hands, who thought having a theme was cool? We don't ever really announce themes. You like the theme? Theme's okay. <laughs> I mean, we're doing a convention anyway. We may as well have some organizing principle. And so next year, we're running with a new theme, Rise of the Machines. Yeah. <laughs> one, of the <laughs> one of the new overlords is here next to me in the Cyber Grand Challenge box, just getting ready to look at its new territory. Um, next year we'll have more of those. And so I figure it's pretty appropriate uh, theme next year. So you can expect movies and short story contests and imagery to everything be around sort of badges. this. And badges, right? Um, think about the number 24 and think about Rise of the Machines and you will have a really cool idea on how to, uh, maybe if you're organizing a contest or making art. So I wanted to give you that heads up. Also, I want to give you a quick heads up. If you liked staying at the Paris or Bally's or any of the other hotels, uh, we already have registration open for next year. So that's online. If you go to the tab in the upper left hand corner, DEF CON 24, you can start grabbing a block or getting the room you want now. And we've never managed to do that before. It took us 24 years, 23 years. So, uh, so those are my administrative. Uh, announcements and I want to move on to the first team that keeps us all connected. That's the infrastructure team or the NOC team. So you'll see uh, wearing the, on the back of the shirts we have the teams. F in here represents the NOC team. I want to pass it off to him for making us, uh, helping us stay connected. So F in. Thanks Jeff. <laughs> Hello DEFCON. Woo! Is everyone alive still? A little bit? Okay. So I have five minutes, so let's do this very quick. This, the slides are going to be online on the, the URL that we have at the end of the presentation. So what do we do? We keep you all some, somehow connected. So the wired network for everything that you see on the slide, you can barely see that, can't you? But uh, you can see on your computer later. DCTV, who watch DCTV on their hotel rooms here in the Woo! Paris and Bally's? Thanks for our DCTV team, Video Man and Morgan, uh, and the wireless infrastructure, our, our ugly child of all, all the time, but it worked. 
so we did a lot of planning. As DT said, it's always fun changing venues, especially for us. Uh, having two hotels was very awesome. And it worked out really, really well. The hotel staff was awesome, and it's all there. Uh, we had a few concerns, as you can see there. DCTV streaming to both hotels was a little bit of a challenge, but our team kicked butt, so that's good. And, but not, not everything goes as planned, right? But we worked through the issues. Uh, we got some new gear. Uh, this year, so we got uh, some new access points a little faster, got a more powerful Aruba controller to run everything from there, and some new Raspberry Pis for DCTV and also um, big shout out for the Sound of Knowledge people for actually being able to put the slides, I don't know what's happening here, it's not me. We're being dosed again. What's new? Oh, now he's blue. <laughs> and our upgrade is blue. That's very cool. <laughs> um, anyhow, so again, shout out for Sound, Sound of Knowledge for putting the slides. For, so when you're on DCTV, you know, don't, not on, you're not only looking at the, at the speaker or speakers. So I'm not going to go through this. This is the timeline for the setup since Monday. We got here, we've been here for a week. Trust me, it's fun. Um, challenges, the usual challenges that we have is like mapping the ports, having all the connections right, the VLANs, we have a lot of VLANs. Um, we thought that having iOS and Windows instructions was enough for you guys, I'm sorry. Next year we will have more instructions, including for Linux. But if you run Linux and you don't know how to configure Wi-Fi, you have to rethink that. Um, and we obviously we didn't get the requirements on time, and we have to uh, work through the last-minute changes. More challenges. There's a lot of those here, and when the vendor area opens, we get a lot of those, and that's always awesome. Major issues that we have, again, port mapping. We plug something in one port. We, you, we expect people to see one thing, they see other things. Thanks for letting us know so we can fix it quickly. Uh, the Android 802NX debacle, that was fun. Um, and hopefully it's going to be fixed next year. It's not our fault. Uh, and we couldn't get any of the devices to authenticate, the, to verify the server side certificate. And there was another small glitch that I'll talk about in a little bit. Numbers, not, not going to go through this. You can download the Prezzo and see that. These are some more interesting numbers that we have. How many terabytes of data we, we streamed or you guys downloaded or uploaded. But you see a little red thing there. That's when the Wi-Fi got very tired and we put it to sleep, right? <laughs> so we gave it Xenax and it, it went away. But this morning it was up again. Uh, we, we had a little issue there. And you guys are very creative. When you pick your passwords for the Wi-Fi reg, um, these are the kind of PG-13 ones. More stats, you guys like graphs, stats, what kind of devices we have. You can look this online. And one of the most important things, please give it up for my team. These guys are awesome. They are here all week. So I cannot see anyone, but if they're there, thank you. They're probably working. And also thanks to Jeff, Russ, Cheryl, the Caesar staff here, the IT staff is awesome. Encore, always helping us with the, the network drops and everything else. Big shout out to Dragorn. If he couldn't fix 802NX <laughs> or give us ideas with wireless and 802NX, nobody else could. He was my default route there. And thanks for all of you for this year behaving as much as you could on the network. <laughs> Thank you. All right. So. <clears throat> See if we can get started here. 
I do want to take a minute and thank all of the departments that work within DEF CON. It takes about 300 people to put this on. Um, if you add up all the hours we put in just at CON, it's about four years of full-time work weeks for one person. That's just for this weekend. I can assure you I worked about that much over this year with <laughs> Jeff and Cheryl and the rest of the team trying to get this planned throughout the year as well. So thank you to all of the departments, all of the goons, all of the volunteers, all the contest POCs, uh, the hotel, everybody that really helped us out with this. I really appreciate it. You made my life much easier this year. So next I'm going to call up X, Agent X here for speakers. I'm actually going to use that wireless mic. I'm going to use the wireless mic. I don't know if it's on. It is now. Oh. It is now. Oh. So quick, own him. <laughs> own him. So we had uh, 218 speakers speak this year. In, so that's 132 talks, 128 hours of content all compressed in. Um, and I'm, I'm ably assisted by 21 speaker goons who just work like 18 hours a day for me and then party like rock stars every night. Um, we did something new this year. Nikita and Totenkoff organized workshops. We had seven of them running um, for a total of 24 workshops and 104 hours of workshops. People went in there all day long and, and basically learned a ton of stuff. Hey, who went to workshops? Yeah. Whoa. Right. Yeah. Do you want more workshops? <laughs> so yeah, that's the um, that's the quick one. One of the things I was enlightened to this year was our closed captioning system is amazing, and you know you're like, oh, we they we feed them audio and they type really fast. No, they take last year's talks, they do frequency analysis on the words, so they know what we talk about this year. Every year they do that. And they, um, they, unlike the speaker operations staff, read the bio and know what the person's going to talk about ahead of time. So let's give it up for our closed captioning people spread out all over the world. <laughs> oh, they're real. This is in a touring test. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. That's all. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So one of the best parts of DEF CON every year are the badges and all the hidden clues and everything else around the conference. It includes all of our artwork, our floor stickers, our program, the badges. Everything at this conference has now been tied into his master plan. I'd like to introduce Lost Boy so he can talk about the badges and his badge challenge. So we had a really good uh, year this year. Um, I was really happy with the camaraderie and participation, especially seeing teams helping out other teams. Um, there were teams that were camped out at the hotel before us even starting the conference this year. When I tweeted out a certain picture, people actually I identified where we were on the conference floor and were like on top of me within the space of like a minute and a half. Ru Russ looked at me like, like, they just already found you, dude. What's going on? Um, another couple of quick things. You've all been looking at the lanyards, so I thought you might uh, find it interesting that the lanyard codes this year were both based on different literary works. Uh, you had Edgar Allan Poe and, and Charles Dodson. Um, and it looked like it was two separate ciphers, but it actually took all six lanyards to solve, and it took the first team 12 hours to get just past the part that involved the lanyards. You. you sorry, I get all energetic. I know, yeah. I get We're excited like when I talk about this stuff. So you actually had to take and realize that each of the codes had a similar number of, of uh, pieces and you formed a coordinate system that mapped out physically on a keyboard which letters it was that it popped out. So it's actually a, a Cartesian coordinate system based on a keyboard. That's what the, the keyboards were for in there. A uh, side story that we didn't give out in, uh, in the opening ceremonies, people keep asking me about uh, flying with these. So as an experiment, I put six of these in my bag, in uh, the Uber badge, the radioactive badge, and flew here with them. So as we're going through the checkout, 
uh, TSA pulls my bag. And I was like, okay, here it goes. I'm going to have the story to tell at DEF CON now. But uh, they pull me aside and they go right past the, the six Uber badges that are in my bag and the two vials of uranium and, and other material. Did the radioactive detector go off? So, no, it didn't, which is, which is, maybe I shouldn't say that. Uh, yeah. but, uh, <laughs> One of, the vi one of the vials actually had a sticker on it that said radioactive with the little symbol um, on it. They didn't. And what the reason they had pulled me aside is for part of the challenge this year, they had to, uh, one, the, you had your team had to present me with a $2 bill. And I had gone around and was collecting all of the $2 bills I could get my hands on. I did that around the hotel as well too to try and, and make it more difficult. So the thing that they thought was interesting is I had this fat stack of cash because it was $2 bills so it looked like a whole lot of money. So when they pulled my bag out, they're like, oh, radioactive, radioactive. Okay, why do you have this stack of money in your bag? <laughs> and so, <laughs> so I just gave the lady a deadpan look and I, and I said, I'm going to Vegas. <laughs> and they said, go ahead and go through. And I guess they've been collecting these. <laughs> you can see. <laughs> Um, I'd like to. Wait, tell them about how the vials showed up. Oh, um, so the the uh, the tritium vials. So those of you that were in the other talk uh, heard me talking about how you can actually buy uh, tritium in the UK, but you can't in the United States. So I found a guy in Singapore who had a who had a machine for packaging coffee, and when I ordered these uh, vial uh, the tritium vials from him, they they would ship them over hidden inside packets of coffee, and so. <laughs> When they first got to my house, I was like, oh crap, I'm going to have to tell Jeff I wasted a bunch of money because this guy totally fleeced me on the internet. Um, but he, he sent them, you rip open the copy packet, dump it out, and there's all your tritium. So <laughs> good to the last drop, I guess. Not really, not really sure what that's all about, but it's probably not legit. <laughs> it would, oh, 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 wait, sorry, that was a hypothetical story. That, <laughs> that didn't actually happen. I wouldn't do that, nor would I advocate that. Anyway. We uh, <laughs> and address, they're like, what is the URL of this individual? <laughs> uh, the only other thing, like I said, you all heard me in the opening ceremonies. This badge was my homage to, to Richard Feynman this year, and uh, so those of you, thank you. The only other point that I'd really like to like beat you over the head with is I asked in opening ceremonies, how many of you have heard of Wasenar? Raise your hand. Wasnar? Sorry, I pronounced it wrong. Yeah, Wasnar. Yeah. So that's really sad and scary. So the reason we did the records this year too is now you all have a record having come to DEF CON. Uh, sorry. Uh, but it's really important for, for those of you that are security researchers or hackers, these laws are going to affect us going forward. It's really important that you all know about that. So go home and look this up. But uh, the guys that are on the winning team, where's the council in line? Where are you guys? Come on up. Go ahead, send someone up quick, 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 because everyone's tired and wants to go home. So these guys were like a well-oiled machine. They had like covert operatives from their team hiding in my room in the corner, like acting all quiet and listening to every conversation that was happening. So at one point I actually turned to one of their team and I said, don't think I don't know what you're doing because there's a guy back there and every time I'd have a conversation I'd see a phone come out and somebody whispering into the phone. They had actually also set up an auto, um, teams had set up an auto, uh, they had hacked one of the badges from previous years to flash an LED whenever I sent out a tweet. So they used a badge from previous years <laughs> as an alarm for whenever tweeted out. But anyway, I want to get, we, we've got very limited time so if you have, oh, and they, apparently they have a pair of grifter shoes. <laughs> so do you have a, a, a spokesperson from your team that would like to say a few words about what it was like going through this? Yeah. Hurry, hurry, hurry. Doesn't matter. Let's go. So there's a part when we were about halfway through the challenge, you put a board outside of your room. We thought it was part of the challenge and it had two coordinates on it. Um, we went to one of those coordinates and there was a land cable hanging from the ceiling that wasn't connected to anything at one end. That's all I'm going to say about that. <laughs> so uh, to explain that a little bit, one of the puzzle pieces actually was a sequence that they found in the online integer sequence database that was submitted by a person who had the last name of Herring. Um, <laughs> So anyway, I'd like to present uh, the first black Uber badge for this year to the Council of Nine for winning this challenge. Woo! 
So, oh, no. you gotta go this way and sign the book. So we're doing this. Uh, did you want to talk about the book oh, real quick? Go okay. So we're we're gonna actually do a a, a book registry um, next year. We'll have a, a much larger presentation. But uh, so we are actually registering all of the Ubers that go out from this point forward. But I would just like to say I encourage all of you every year to play with the puzzles. I put very easy puzzles in as well as to very difficult. You might have noticed there was some ROT13 in the program. That's for when you're bored standing in line. But you also may have noticed it stopped decoding about halfway through. So, you know, play as much as you're comfortable. But I encourage you to talk to each other. Get to know each other. That's why I put stuff on the lanyard. So you have to talk to other people. The, my favorite part about this year was the team, that, some of that team came back and said, I was new last year. I met these guys. We worked together. And they stayed in contact all year long. And that kind of stuff is what makes it worthwhile to me. And I'd like to thank uh, Jeff and DT for letting me continue to do this because apparently you guys like the abuse. So. Oh. So as you saw that this year was a non-electronic badge. Uh, we are going to continue with our TikTok cycle. Um, we will be having an electronic badge next year. And that's it. Thank you. I'm looking for uranium vials under the uh, podium here. Okay, so um, one of the things with DEF CON is that over time people come and go. Um, they get tired of doing certain things. If you've been here more than 15 years, you've seen me in about five different job functions. Well, you retired, I thought, last year. Yeah, that was three years ago, and it, it has worked out well, as you can all tell. Um, and so, these aren't the only two people that are retiring. I hope we point them out specifically because they're department heads or seconds. Um, Agent X, who has been running our speakers for well over a decade, 15 years. <laughs> he said it was 15. Yeah. Yeah, so he's been here 15 years. And then we have Flea. Where's Flea? He's at the goon swim. Uh, he's at the goon swim. Yeah, he has actually retired. So, yeah, he's been here for a long time. So, if we can give a round of applause for him as well. So, we're going to give this super badge to both of them, hoping that since they're leaving us hanging, the radioactive components will take care of them for us. Oh, thank Excellent. You. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Uh, just to add on to that, there are, uh, there are quite a few other goons that are either transitioning to other departments, want to do something else, or are moving on because you've beat the crap out of them for 20 plus years. Well, so we've got this strategy that because we're so community driven that you shouldn't do something you're not interested in. And people are creative and they want to do different things. So we really try to create an environment at DEF CON where you come and you can do stuff, you get burned out, you leave, but you can always come back. It's like a family and you can rotate through. So I'm not convinced that, that we won't see the last of Axe sooner or later, right? We might see you again maybe. And so that's the environment we want to create. So just like you guys, sometimes you come to DEF CON, sometimes you don't. But we really try to create an awesome environment where you can come and do what inspires you. And that changes year to year, right? And so I think for the next slide we want to talk a little bit about all the, yeah, Grifter, contest who stepped up now, right? Grifter used to do one thing. Now Grifter is running our contents, events, and villages. It's a new role for him. And he came in sort of at the last minute and really did a fantastic job. So let's, uh, let's give a round of applause to Grifter for stepping up. Yeah, it, uh, it somehow ended up being the contests, events, villages, parties, and the penthouses, and the demo labs. So, <laughs> no, no pressure. I've lost my mind. Um, it, yeah. We were trying to come up with something for the eye, but we were saying pelvic because parties, events, labs, anyway. Uh, so, fundraisers. Um, so we have, um, obviously every year we have a lot of people who put a lot of time and effort into just doing something for others. Um, these people stepped up in that regard. So we have um, Eddie Mize. So Eddie raised uh, $2,590 for the EFF. In a, so awesome. 
He, uh, he also raised $4,590 for Hackers for Charity. And then uh, we also have Mohawk Khan. Uh, there's, there's quite a few Mohawks running around out here, thank, <laughs> thanks to Ed and her crew. Um, so Mohawk Khan for the EFF raised $2,434. And, and for Hackers uh, for Charity, an, an additional $995. What's that? 1070 there is an additional all right donation there so um, and then crash and compile which is one of the contests while they're doing the contest they raise money for the EFF as well so they raise seven hundred dollars for the EFF um, so uh, one thing that uh, we also do you know you guys have heard of blood code blood code is out there again this year um, and there were 84 donations given there are people out there giving blood which is awesome. Um, and and an, uh, 126 total signups for Be the Match. So awesome, guys. I, I did have an interesting moment where some attendees came up in the contest area and they saw the blood code stuff out there. If you saw everything up, and they were like, holy crap, is that where people go when they get hurt? Why are all those people laying down? Like, you're like, <laughs> It's a bloodbath in here. Get out, you know. Um, and then um, also just uh, two quick things. So we have uh, the Hackers for Charity. We have a misprint uh, badge that will be, yes, there's only one of these. Uh, and it has some artwork by Eddie Mize on here. So after we're done with, uh, with the closing ceremonies, we'll be auctioning it off right over here for Hackers for Charity. Um, and, I'll, and I'll show you something. It's black. It's, it's, not a, it's not a black badge. It just happens to be a badge that's black. <laughs> so anyway, and then uh, also I wanted to talk about the EFF. The, at their booth with everybody raising money all over the place, parties were raising money, different things, uh, they have raised um, over $80,000 and climbing this weekend. So thank you all. Uh, and we have somebody from the EFF here uh, just with a few quick comments. Can you do it? <laughs> so thanks everybody. Thanks for your support. Uh, your support like yours lets us do our work. This year we filed more than 15 new lawsuits, major progress in 11 more, uh, something like 50 amicus briefs all over the country at every level. Uh, that's tens of thousands of hours of work. Just this week in Las Vegas, we counseled more than 10 security researchers who are presenting. Um, hopefully kept everybody out of jail, so thanks a lot, guys. Uh, DT and the Goons, thanks so much. Uh, and to our supporters who, who uh, raised money for us, WaffleCon, DC801, Wall of Sheep, DC Darknet, MohawkCon, Hacker Jeopardy, Scavenger Hunt, Eddie Mize, Hack Fortress, Rapid7, the DEF CON parties, check marks, and Crash and Compile. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. And Kurt lost his voice, so thanks for that. Is that it? Okay, cool. All right, so uh, moving on. So we have a lot of villages around here. We had 12 villages this year, all different things uh, kicking off everywhere. Uh, it's something we started at DEF CON 14 and then it's just grown and grown and grown. It's fantastic. Uh, we always say you can make this con your own and these uh, folks help us do that. So uh, please give a round of applause to all of our villages for helping. <laughs> Um, so we have uh, we have something for the organizers. They're you know they don't have a lot of contests and things we, uh, for the villages, but those guys put in a lot of effort. Um, so we have a really cool custom T-shirt that we're going to give three of them to each one of the villages. Um, an agent hand, hand sewn by Mar, and uh, Agent X will be modeling it for us. Yes, <laughs> give him a turn. <laughs> I don't care if there's nothing on the back. Turn anyway. So, so this is a uh, 
This is a limited edition shirt that Mar made with an Arduino daisy running. She hand stitched every shirt with conductive thread that ties it all together. And so we're going to give the organizers of the villages three of each. They can do with what they want. But we really wanted to give them something special and limited because they don't run contests. They never really get recognized with black badges or anything. But they really do awesome work. So we want to recognize the village organizers. So if you are one of the organizers of the villages, please uh, come over here to this side of the stage and we'll get you guys set up. So this slide says other contests and events. So you can imagine what it's like for us going into planning this. Um, like Jeff said, uh, myself and Panadero who is running around somewhere over there. There he is. He's waving, giving out those shirts. Um, we, uh, we put in quite, quite a number of hours. I didn't realize quite how many it would be when I got the phone call from Jeff and Russ, uh, but it's all good. Um, so, <laughs> so yeah, so this is all that, this is all that stuff out there. Um, so please um, give a huge round of applause to all the organizers of all this content. It's unreal. Also, if you're interested in doing something like running a contest, um, hit me up at grifter at defcon.org and we'll try to see what we can do. Oh, and the Yeah, and we, when, once we are, are moving forward on a contest and stuff, we put together stuff on the forums. You can get on the defcon forums and say like, hey, this is what I want to do. And if I don't see it, somebody will let me know and we'll just, we'll get planning. Um, the sooner, the better, and uh, the more activity, the better. So, Moving right along. Our Uber contest. All right. So uh, we have let's, a number of badges up here. We're just going to start running through them. Do we have our social engineering CTF guys up here? Chris, yeah. Chris, Chris, Chris. He's coming. Oh, he's very sneaky. You're up. I did. I came up the exit. Sorry. Yeah, these guys are incredible. So they, they grew this year. We gave them double the space. We thought that that would be enough and it wasn't and so we'll have to discuss that for next year. But yeah. it was nuts. You guys absolutely love this village and so um, thank you. Thank you. I think we need this room for the SC Village, right? Yeah? Yeah? yeah you think? <laughs> No, I mean, it's, it's been great this year. And I tell you, the communication with Grifter and his team, it, if you guys had any of that, it was really awesome. I mean, they were just so on top of stuff. So thank you, Grifter, Russ, Cheryl. That's the only reason we got stuff done. Okay, so CTF, we had, um, we had two uh, first and second place winner. Our second place winner was John Serpa. Came in with over 1,000 points between the report and the calls. Oh, here, hold that for a second. I don't know if we're on the screen if you can see this one. But we made some really cool uh, award things this year. Yeah. Yeah, I can't really block it with my hand. But <laughs> yeah, really cool. That's for you, John. Thank you. And some whole bunch of cool hacking stuff in there. We had Raytheon came in. I don't know if you're going to trust this or not. Raytheon came in and they gave us some uh, USB kind of devices <laughs> and said, and said this is a puzzle. If you'd like to solve it, you can plug it in your computer. And I went, I'm going to give it to the winners of the contest. <laughs> so they're both getting one, but, <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah, man, thank you. Great job. Great job. Okay, now we have a real like serious thing. Guys, this is the third year in a row that a woman has won the SECTF. Third year in a row. <laughs> so, yikes, that thing is awesomely beautiful. So, come up here, Jen. You also get a clipboard full of awesome hacker stuff. You get a, a Wi-Fi pineapple-like device, a coin, a huge, bigger thing you can hit someone with and hurt them. <laughs> but now here is the look at this thing. So from what I understand, this thing is like uh, radioactive. So I'd be careful where you hang it on your body. Um, 
depending if you want children or not, but there you are. <laughs> Black badge. Congratulations. So guys, next year we gotta step it up. Okay, we gotta step it up, guys, three years in a row. So come on. We gotta represent again. Back to you, Grifty. Grifty. Grifter. Grifter. <laughs> Grifty. I love you, man. That's my pet name. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, Next up. Oh, badge hacking, but were they made? It was your time. That's right. We already did yours. Um, all right. Open CTF. Open CTF. Who's the guy? But no applause. Open CTF. <laughs> Okay, sorry. OpenCTF almost didn't happen this year, actually. Uh, oh, is it not on? Test, test, test. Okay. Close, close. Close? There okay. You Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, OpenCTF almost didn't happen this year. Uh, so we'd really like to thank uh, Sherelle and Betsy from DEF CON, Mark from Bally's, Gr and Grumpy Bear, and the rest of Legit BS for an 11th hour save. Yeah. OpenCTF. OpenCTF is a Jeopardy style capture the flag contest open to all DEF CON attendees, but serious skills are needed to win. Out of over 150 registered teams, 61 teams scored this year with 31 challenges open by the end. Unfortunately, we had to turn some people away due to lack of space, but we're already working to make sure that doesn't happen next year. And our winners, uh, best write ups, Mad Haxers, and Vols. Cryptos. Los Cryptos. Yeah, I don't know. Third place was third place was Lol Dongs with 1,960 points. Second place was second place was Neg9 with 2,710 points. And first place was OX8F, who stayed up all night the first night to solve a hundred or I'm sorry, 1,500 points worth of challenges, um, although I do think he had some uh, remote help. <laughs> um, and he had, he had 3,410 points, sorry. And we'd also like to thank BeagleBoard.org for donating the BeagleBoard plaques we're giving to our winners, and uh, you keep what you kill. All right, we're switching it up, I guess. I was trying to keep the audio guys guessing. Uh, so um, we have uh, our next one is Warlock Games. Are you guys here? We're right here. It's the new organizer this year. What's that? Yeah. So these these guys are. This is a new organizer this year. Um, I'll let him tell you about the contest, but uh, it was a lot of fun to have these guys in the contest area. There's always a, a bunch of craziness going on in their corner, and uh, the, the guys who are competing seem to be having a blast. Thank you very much. How many of you got a chance to play in Warlock Games this year? A couple, a few? Nobody well, played. We got some up here. Yeah. Okay, fair enough. So Warlock Games is a, it's a capture, uh, it's a challenge-based uh, CTF. Uh, so you have things that go in network, uh, packet forensics, uh, digital forensics, those kinds of things, uh, live malware analysis. Uh, we always bring in a physical security aspect uh, because it's not all about the electronics in the security world. So you get in there and you get a chance to uh, give it a roll at uh, handcuffs, padlocks, those kinds of things. Now this year we also got a chance to bring in some video games, uh, bringing in some old, uh, old school like uh, Street Fighter and Pac-Man and whatnot. So kind of uh, a blast from the past. And, uh, and that way we kind of brought in the entire gaming experience, the hacking challenges and the physical security piece. So we have uh, two teams up here with us. Our uh, other teams had to take off. And we always talk about um, that this is a, uh, a networking type event, right? So a lot of you have been coming here for many, many years and you start to see the familiar faces and the people that you know. So our second place team, uh, I think they knew, they, they knew most of you, I think they picked up two people while they were standing in line. Uh, and they made up six members of their team. The other four already knew each other. 
Um, and I'm going to go ahead and let them come up and, uh, and uh, give a few moments about uh, their team and, and how they did the challenge. Oh, man. Super nervous. All right. We did great. Uh, I actually think we did great. I want to commend these guys, too, for doing a great job. But uh, it was fun. It was awesome. Do you guys, I mean, I, I'd like to give it up to the guys that host this thing. They do such a good job spending their time doing, the entire time doing it. Yeah. Good job. Really good job. But um, all of our team had to go. They had to go back to their normal lives. But I had a great time. And I want to thank everybody, Fed, uh, myself, Disco, Mega, Dick, and Molotov for their help with the puzzles. So thank you guys. Okay. And so our first place team, um, they're actually out of uh, Samsung in South Korea, and we've had a few of their team members compete with us in the past, and I'm going to let them come up and uh, give a few seconds about their team and how they accomplished some of their challenges. Uh, I really appreciate it, uh, Wara. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank Short and simple. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, so thank you very much for that. And uh, so we, we were told uh, kind of as our contest closed out um, that we were uh, uh, going to be a black badge event this year, and it's kind of a, uh, a humbling experience, if you will, for those of you that put contests together uh, to be acknowledged in this way. Uh, it does take a lot of time and effort to put this together and to get the nod uh, from the DEF CON staff and from DT that, uh, that, that were there. So I would also like to give a shout out to the goon staff that was running that contest and events area. They did it uh, and they were all over the place helping us out and they were everywhere. So uh, good job to them and congratulations to them. So what we'd like to do is present the black badge to our first place team from uh, Samsung South Korea. Thanks very much, Defcon. We'll see you next year. Yeah. Hey, you guys head off this way and sign the book. Hack Fortress, where you at? <laughs> Hacker. Hey, uh, just as a heads up, Crash and Compile, you are going to be next. <laughs> just if you want to get ready. <laughs> you should leave the list up. So what well, you don't leave it up all the time. Anyway, hey, what's up? Uh, first of all, with the winning team, uh, come on up and stand up front real quick. I see, are you, like, go around up front. Because um, we don't want to get this shit on them. They're on people up here. Um, yeah, we're gonna get chromed up. Anyway, so Hack Fortress is our fifth year at DEF CON. Uh, we appreciate everybody who played. It's our first year as a black badge contest, so we're super excited about it. Um, for those that don't know, Hack Fortress is a uh, uh, contest that we run at SmooCon normally. We bring it out to DEF CON each year. 30 minute combined uh, Team Fortress 2 and uh, hacking competition. Winner moves on, usually until they play uh, Jolly and Friends in the finals. Uh, that seems to be the way it happens every year. Um, this year, the team uh, is called uh, Not Ready for This. Uh, the genesis of the name was a bunch of scabs got together and signed up a team. They didn't know each other. They said, we need a team name. They said, oh, we're not really ready for this. Sweet, that's your team name, thanks. Um, <laughs> and that's what they've been tagged with. And they ran the gamut. They had a, a ringer. Uh, there's a pro running around here. Uh, he's actually a pro gamer, so uh, good job. Uh, <laughs> uh, random chance worked out for them very effectively. Um, so the, uh, on the hack side of this thing, so the Team Fortress 2 is, you know, who's played Team Fortress 2? Best video game in the world? Woo! Yeah. <laughs> uh, so there's a, there's a fantastic game engine at the center of Team Fortress 2 that allows us to control the game environment. We can make real-time manipulation of the game environment. Um, and so what we've done is then add a hacking element to it where there's all these different challenges, be it uh, forensic database, uh, physical, that kind of thing. And then the, what can, they get a currency where they can buy basically uh, different uh, hints or they can modify the game environment, like set the other team on fire, blind them, freeze them, do all that kind of stuff. So um, it's an interactive process between the hacking team uh, and, the, and the TF2 team where they can manipulate each other's game environment. So it's an ongoing adventure. It's worked out pretty well um, and largely runs without uh, uh, too much hassle. Anyway, what they've got be besides uh, one black badge for the entire team. Um, so if you could clear out, we're going to do like a Hunger Games style thing right in the middle um, and just let them all go at it. We've got scimitars and shit, and we'll see how it works out. Um, <laughs> I thought it was really funny, actually. Um, anyway. 
So uh, what we, they also get is an opportunity to jump the line at ShmooCon and buy a ShmooCon ticket uh, so that they don't have to try to hit F5. Uh, for those of you that know what that is, great. Um, but we also are really shitty at remembering who won. So this year we're going to mark them all with spray paint um, so that we can remember, they can show us their hands next year and we'll, we'll let them in uh, and get the ticket. So if you can just line up, hold your hands up, we're going to spray all your hands. We're going to chrome them up real good. Uh, um, anyway, uh, we also were able to raise about $255 uh, max int for 8-bit processors for uh, uh, EFF. That's not a lie. That's actually how much we raised. Um, so we appreciate the bribes we got from all the teams. So anyway. I'm very mad max with the chrome. It was very. So one of the challenges actually was you had to spray paint your face with silver, pick up the bumper from the scavenger hunt, and run around the contest area screaming witness as loud as you could. Um, <laughs> and it worked out very well. That's a good look for you, X. I live. I die. I live again. Oh my god. <laughs> it turns out I haven't seen the movie, so I actually don't know how that really, why it's funny. Um, anyway, I think that's it. That's it. Thank you very much. Oh, hand out the back. Oh, we're going to hand out the badge, so here we go. Um, a little fight. Oh, actually, uh, I'm going to, by fiat, because um, I like Bitcoin, uh, by fiat I'm going to hand this guy uh, the black badge, because this gentleman here uh, took the motivation to actually commentate the video game for us. Oh, um, awesome. He's very good at it. His name is? Jason. Jason? Yeah. Jason, is that your God-given name? Yeah. That's his God given. That's not a handle. It just sounds like one. Um, and he was very good at it. He did about five rounds for us. He's British, so it sounded even better. Uh, so we really appreciate the effort that you put in. So congratulations. Thank you. Yeah. And, and if I may take the pulpit for one second and be so bold, and not to bite the hand that feeds me, but fewer photographs and fewer cameras next year, maybe? Yeah. Oh. Maybe. I, somewhere, like, where they're doing the closed captioning, that person's fingers are smoking. Like, that was the motor mouth potter. Uh, all right. Uh, crash of the pile. <laughs> yeah, so uh, Crashing the Pile, for those people who don't know, is a combination of a ACM style programming contest and a drinking game. So you get a problem, you solve it in code. And if your code doesn't compile, well, you're taking a drink. If you know, it doesn't produce the right output, you take a drink. If another team comes up with the solution before you do, everyone else takes a drink. Anyway, we've been running this for a while, and uh, one of the things we changed this year is we wanted more participation. So we actually ran our pre-qualification round at DEF CON. So we had more teams. We had 41 teams actually try out for this. There's only nine spots available. Uh, so we had an excellent showing. Everyone had a great time. So our winning team. Oh, yeah. So tell them what it does. So this um, is a basketball-sized metal D20. Welded up myself. It's the Crash and Compile trophy. Uh, this is originally when we first started. We had a uh, we decided to program in random programming languages. Started out playing the game, uh, and what better way to pick something random than a giant dice? <laughs> so, you can get a happy. the winner is uh, Volatile Konst. Our second place team was Sprink Rules, and then third place was Neg Nine. And I'd like to present the black badge. Congratulations. Yeah. What was the winning technique? Was it iron liver? Or? Uh, the winning technique, it was uh, the beer points. Um, <laughs> uh, thanks, Crux, uh, Punk, Fish, Gigs, and I'm missing others. Uh, yeah, team distraction, you were way more fucking annoying than last year. Um, That's what we do. Thanks for Ryan for bringing it home. I couldn't read by the last problem set. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, we've been doing cons for 10 plus years. We did contests now the last three. I've uh, met a ton of people in the last three years. So get involved with the contest. It's a great way to meet people. Thanks.
Thank you very much. Congratulations. Good job. That's an awesome trophy. All right, next up, scavenger hunt. Of course. Hi, I'm Salem with the scavenger hunt. If your DEF CON experience was slightly weird, you're welcome. Or I'm sorry, one of the two. Uh, I have notes here. I have a bunch of stuff specifically for DT. Oh no. We have a shirt for you. Excellent. We've got one of our laser cut trophies. Excellent. Uh, one of our challenges this year, last year we gave out uh, floppy disks. Which was a lot of fun because people had to find out where to find a floppy disk or a floppy <laughs> like the reader. Pieces. Yeah, this year we gave out VHS tapes. <laughs> <laughs> the VHS tape on the scav list was worth 20 points. So it had a lot of fun stuff on it. Uh, also had some really fun tie ins with the Cult of 23. Oh, and awesome. so we got one specifically awesome. for Jeff. So we will encode this and make it available to the public. <laughs> oh, of course, of course. So uh, on the list of this year, we had uh, 220 possible items. Uh, the first place team turned in 104 items. Second place team got 96 items. Uh, there was literally a two point difference between first and second place. And it told out to eight items in that two points. Uh, our second place team as well did end up raising some money for the EFF. We ended up getting $216 just for the EFF by one random scav item. It was great. Any uh, live chickens? What's that? Any, any live chickens this year? No, no live chickens and no horse heads. Because ah. I didn't want to deal with them again. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, before I call up my, my winning team, I can't do this alone. I'm Salem. I can't do this. My team here is what makes this happen. On the end, I've got Dooldy Flip Flop. I've got Zora. I've got Sconce. I've got Evil Mofo. These guys make this happen so much harder than I do, even though my face is in charge. And uh, this year is actually my last year running this. I'm giving my badge to this guy. I'm making him be in charge of this from now on. All right, now for my top three teams. Uh, third place, Glasses Red. I have no idea if you're here. Yeah! There we go. Don't bother coming up. Go over there. No, no, no go, go over there. Go over there. Go over there. We'll meet you over there. Uh, like I said, two point difference between first and second place. Second place team, the National Shit Posting Agency. <laughs> Our first place team, our winners, Gre Glenn Greenwald Santorum. <laughs> you guys come up front, get your black badge. Here's the badge for them. Thank you. Thank you. And Greenwald. I want to give some love to the people who gave us free prizes, stuff to give away to our winners. Uh, no Starch, Pony Express, Syrupix, Simple Wi-Fi, UIT, Think Geek, DJ Jackalope, Unix Surplus. There's about six more that I forgot to write down. <laughs> and a big thanks, a big thanks to Grifter and his team for putting up with us. <laughs> All right, so my three teams, go over there for prizes. <laughs> no, you can answer this way. Go that way. Go that way. We'll go that way. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, before we bring up the, the last folks here, I just wanted to uh, 
to say thanks to my team, the guys who uh, were running around like crazy or at times just sitting on a couch. Uh, the contest and events team, and especially uh, to Panadero, who's back here hiding in the shadows. Uh, without him, this definitely wouldn't have happened. So please, a big round of applause for those guys. All right. Uh, the moment you've all been waiting for. Ladies and gentlemen, capture the flag. We've got more beer behind too. If you want more beer, That's you guys want beer? BS We've got right some. There. Always beer. Okay, we've, beer. we've been drinking for a couple hours. Get some beer while you're doing this. Beer is good. Okay, we're good. Um, yep. Okay, hi everybody. I'm Grumpy Bear. We are the legitimate business syndicate. This is our third year running DEF CON's Capture the Flag. Um, we would like to thank DEF CON for having us back again. Uh, we want to thank all the fans that come by the room throughout the weekend. It was super rewarding to see uh, the same people coming back again and asking even better questions than they were before. Uh, we want to thank the teams that played this year. Everybody played with honor and extreme skill. How many teams tried to qualify? 4,000. 4,000 people registered for our qualifying Four event. 4,000 teams Greater registered our qualifying event back in May. Uh, ten people from that event were invited to come play here this weekend. Five teams. teams. <laughs> um, and five other teams that we, that we pre-qualified through other CTFs throughout the year to give everyone a chance. Um, some highlights from the game this year. Friday we opened up with an x86-64 binary. Uh, later on in the day we threw a standard 32-bit x86 binary. Um, then we opened uh, an embedded MIPS platform, the CI-20. And Friday night, we had a lightning round that we actually ran on a Nexus 9, which is, as you know, Android, which is ARM64. Um, Saturday, for the first time in at least 10 years, we ran a Windows 10 challenge on uh, Windows 10 IoT Core, <laughs> which is running on a Raspberry Pis. <laughs> uh, also for the first time um, at the DEF CON CTF, we ran Saturday night a uh, live CTF. We took four of the best hackers in the world, we hooked up to their computers and ran capture cards and watched what they were doing uh, for a live hacking challenge. Um, check out our website, legitbs.net, uh, for that video that's going to be post-processed and released to the world very soon. Um, cool. Yeah. That's cool. Oh, yeah, and uh, not a super big surprise, but PPP won that live CTF challenge. Woo! Um, so also this year we had a really super cool 3D visualization of the game running in Unreal Engine. Um, so if you guys check out our website pretty soon, we're going to go ahead and put up uh, a capture of the whole uh, game running in fast speed so you can watch the whole visualization. There's missiles that jump across the screen and it's really super cool. Um, okay, so now I'm going to hand it over to the leader of Legitimate Business Syndicate, which is Gynophage, and he's going to give us the results of this year's game. Woo! Hi, everybody. I am Gynophage of the Legitimate Business Syndicate. In third place this year, we had zero days sober. There, all the way in the back, somewhere over there. Stand up if you want or not. Oh. In second place, we had the two time champion, PPP, the Plaid Parliament of Pony. And in first place, a first timer at the DEF CON Capture the Flag finals, we had DEF CORE. Death Corps, come up to the stage. Come on up. So they get badges. Come on up, guys. The winners, er, Death Corps will be receiving eight black badges and eight jackets for their victory at the Capture the Flag the this year. The only contest that gets the jackets. It is the only contest that gets the jackets. Give 
Ja, Chang Su Mam Dero. Yeah, yeah. Good luck getting them back home. <laughs> Yeah, and then, and then, uh, yeah, have them. Do you want to change? Do you want to change? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Uh, first of all, thank you for the Legend Made Business Syndicates for the building the, the uh, world hardest challenges in the ever so yeah we really enjoyed the ctf and uh, we also thank to the all the other teams that uh, uh, competed with us and uh, luckily we won the, this year yeah we are very happy yeah <laughs> and uh, secret technique we have the world best hacker jung Lee. he sold uh, all the challenges yeah all of the challenges sold by him also, the Windows 10 Raspberry Pi challenge, oh. uh, he didn't even have the debugger. Yeah. So <laughs> he solved the challenge the second day's night. But uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. we really debugger. enjoyed that. No yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. You're gonna yeah. Yeah. Back Thank you so much. You're going to gonna defend the challenge next year? You're going to defend? Yeah, we should. Yeah. 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 We'll be here again. Okay, so the, the winning team gets to come back to defend in the following year. So we're going to see DEF Core next year. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. Thank you so much. I don't want to say that I can predict the future, but on every Uber badge, there's a Korean uh, saying. It says, Yat Jongsu Mamdero, which means the, taf the taffy peddler can do what he pleases. See you next year. See you next year. Good job. So now you got to. And now. I have one final announcement about Capture the Flag. Next year, the Thursday before DEF CON, DARPA would like to show the world how far automated pro er, program analysis has come through the DARPA Cyber Grand Challenge. In honor of next year's DEF CON theme, The Rise of the Machines, we would like to have the winning computer from DARPA's Cyber Grand Challenge compete against the best human hackers in the world at the DEF CON 24 Capture the Flag. Details will be available on our website, legitbs.net, soon. <laughs> yeah. I remember the day the machines took over. Cheers. That way, that way. That way. All right, that finishes it off for contests and events. Thanks to everybody who, um, who played and uh, all the organizers again. And now uh, we'll turn it over to DT. Okay. So this is the, the point where I tell you the, the closing comments which I've already told you at the beginning. You see how I did that? Um, so what we're doing is, as usual every year, but we'll do it faster this year, we're going to release, well, two things. One, we're going to release all the video that we've captured with the captioning. And two, this year, really what sort of DEF CON is composed of, what we get to pass on to those people who aren't lucky enough to be here, is all the speaking and video and the villages. And so this year, I really wanted to step that up, and so we recorded a lot of the speaking in the villages um, that we've never done before. So we almost, you heard how many hours of speaking we had, we have almost double that in all the other villages. So we're going to be releasing all the video that we've captured in all the villages and all the official speaking tracks. So that's going to be a huge amount of data. The other thing I want to announce, which is not directly related to DEF CON, but every year I do a data duplication village. In the last two years, I've been collecting all the videos from all the other hacking cons I can find around the world, curating it, cleaning it up, putting it in a directory structure, and that's what you get if you come to the data village. It's about five and a half terabytes right now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, um, and so all of that data from all the other conventions will be online as well in the coming month. So I don't have to do all this work and release it just once. So in the next couple of months, you're going to see a huge data dump. All the other conventions I could find, all the speaking at Black Hat, and I mean at DEF CON, and um, I mean I'll be releasing the Black Hat data too. <laughs> so <laughs> give me a beer.
<laughs> Give me a beer. No, no, I got a new beer, a full beer. Okay, new beer for drinking. I wanted, that reminds me, Hacker Jeopardy, Win Schwartow won Hacker Jeopardy this year. Yeah. yeah. He didn't fuck it up. Yeah. yeah. I want to do a, give a shout out to Little Rue. I want to give a shout out to the hotel. Who is it? The, it's Mark and Christina. Yeah, Mark and Christina from the hotel for putting up with us in the first year. They were amazing. Um, yeah, and I want to say that the video channels for next year, we've, now that we know the infrastructure, we'll fix that. Anyway, my point of it all is that we're super proud to have the biggest conference ever. We grew about 15%. And we're super proud to have captured more of it than ever and to give it away to the world than ever. And so with all of that said, this is, sounds like bullshit, but it's really true. DEF CON has become what we make of it. And this year I think we've made a fantastic conference. So thank you so much. We'll be around. I'm really looking forward to seeing you next year. Get on the forums and give us feedback. And with that, I'm going to officially close DEF CON 23. Thank you, everyone.